In this video, we are going to learn how to use, store, and rename your General Conditions template. The General Conditions template can be found under week 3. Uh, we have several files in here. The, uh, from the bottom, the, la the, the, the fourth one is the General Conditions template. So if you click on that <coughs> link, it's going to download the general conditions template to your computer. After the file is downloaded, you can open the file and see how it is organized and what is the purpose of this file. We're going to discuss that in this uh, video. The general conditions template, when you first open, it may uh, require to enable editing so you can work on it. This template, the purpose of it, is to record the cost of the general conditions for any particular project. So the, this was designed by one company that they gave me the template so we could use it in class. The first tab is a summary, which is a total amount from the different tabs that they have in other uh, in, in, in inside the same uh, template. So this will um, accumulate all the costs for general conditions, project staff, general expenses, and then the total general conditions. The general requirements such as uh, temporary facilities, utilities, parking, cleaning, protection and safety, and then personal hoist. You could uh, calculate also the cost per square foot. In this case, the building square footage is 10,000. So what this number here is calculating is the amount, which is in cell C5, C5 divided by 10,000. So it gives a cost per square foot, assuming a 10,000 square foot project. It also assumes a duration of 12 months. So if we go here to the dollars per month, then it's going to divide the amount by 12 to calculate the dollars per month. So after we have an amount in project staff or any of these categories, it's going to calculate automatically for us the cost per square foot and the cost per month. So let's look at the different tabs that we have. First one is project staff. This is a uh, tab that contains as many um, people as you could have in this particular company. So you are not going to have one of each of these persons working on your project. If you have a small uh, renovation project, maybe you will have one uh, superintendent and maybe you will have one project engineer uh, working as uh, full-time employees on the uh, job site. So if that's the case, then uh, you will have here, you will look for the uh, project superintendent, okay? And then you will assign how many months that person is going to be working. Let's say the project is uh, an 18-month project. So you will enter 18 here. And as soon as you enter 18, you will see that uh, at a cost of uh, $8,000 per month, the labor will be $144,000. There will be a labor burden that includes uh, the cost of uh, sick uh, vacations, um, insurance, and other um, additional uh, overhead cost for the labor. So then that means that these 18 months of the uh, project general superintendent will end up costing 236160 This cost gets a uh, total uh, down at the bottom of the, the, the sheet and then it is linked back to the summary. So now we see that the summary has uh, an amount of 236160 for project staff, which in a uh, 10,000 square feet building will, will transfer into $23.62 per square foot. And uh, 19680 per month, we have a 18 month, so that's what it will uh, transfer for. 
Yeah, we entered in the project superintendent and let's say that we have also a project engineer. So we may have a field engineer here um, for concrete, MEP, punch list, interiors and so on. Let's say this person stays on the job again 18 months. So now we have a new total, a new running total and then the cost per square foot and cost per month has changed. So you enter in this column how many months each person is going to work. Let's suppose that also we have a project executive that visits the job site once a month and maybe stays about uh, four hours. Okay, So that would be four hours per month. We cannot charge the entire cost to this uh, uh, project because the project executive may be really expensive and we don't need to charge that much. So if we have four hours per month and we figure that a normal person will work 40 hours on one month and then will be approximately 160 hours on a uh, given month then the cost for this project executive may be 4 divided by 160. Okay, so the cost of this project executive per month is going to be just a partial number and not a complete number because this person only works a portion of the month in that particular project. Then we have general expenses, computers, telephones, printers, you know, whatever you think that may be required to have on a job site in order to complete the work. Temporary facilities, same thing. You need to protect the job site uh, against uh, people wandering inside the job site. So you do need to have at least a temporary uh, barricade or temporary fence or some sort of a protection. So you would enter that uh, in the appropriate uh, section. Here we have uh, water, job photos, you know, different items that may be required. Temporary utilities, phone, electricity, water, temporary parking. If you need to pay for additional parking, then this would be the place to store that number. You need cleaning, cleaning crews that will uh, clean up the project after every day. So you will include here what will be the cost for that. Protection and safety, uh, you need to have uh, safety in your uh, particular project uh, to protect the employees that are working over there. You need to have uh, first aid kits, you need to have uh, uh, gates, fence, uh, standard uh, link, for example, uh, chain link. We had a uh, part of the homework was to uh, identify how big this uh, chain link may be and then we basically enter the cost over here. Then we have material uh, and personal hoist. Uh, you know, if we need to have a crane, if we need to have a forklift, whatever the case may be, we will enter the cost and the quantities in here. Some of these uh, materials, equipment, do not have a cost. So you need to really figure out how much that cost is going to be. Uh, there are different sources for cost, like uh, cost books. Uh, there is the internet. You can browse um, for rental equipment, figure out how much they charge. You can go um, online and, and figure out the cost for some of these equipment. So after you have uh, entered the data uh, for the cost that you have in uh, general conditions, then you're going to save this file, right? So you want to save the file, but right now the file is saved in my uh, personal computer. And I do want to save that file in my H drive uh, under the estimate. So what I will do here is I'm going to find where that file is saved. Very likely it's going to be under downloads and that's what it is. I have general conditions template saved under the uh, downloads. So I'm just going to drag that to the desktop. Okay. And then I'm going to rename it. I'm going to use my username at the beginning of the name. 
So my username is Faria J. So now the uh, general conditions template is called Faria J general conditions template, and that will identify that file to be different from someone else who also may have a general conditions template. Now we will proceed with the uh, FTP uh, using Microsoft Explorer. Okay, so using Microsoft Explorer, I will go FTP.eng dot fiu dot edu okay and then uh, I will have to click the alt key on my keyboard to have access to this menu so I'll go view open FTP in file explorer and then I will enter my credentials again this will allow me to see the entire content of my H drive going to take a minute okay so this is the content of my H drive I'm going to look for OCS um, documents and then OST within this I should have a folder called estimate so now I can just drag the file that I copy in my computer to my H drive OCS estimate. I can't open this file from here. If I click on this file, what it will do is it will download a copy of that file in my computer. I cannot directly access the file using the FTP connection. But I can use I can use the uh, EIC apps that we have learned before. If we go and open a browser, we do EIC apps, ENGFIUEDU. I will uh, enter my credentials in here. And now I have access to the EIC apps uh, uh, applications. So I could open Microsoft Office, I could open Microsoft Excel, and now from within the Microsoft Excel that I've opened using uh, the um, using the EIC apps, I will be able to access uh, the general template that I have on my H drive. See when I go open, if I look on their computer, I will be able to see my H drive. See it's right here. This is the H drive for me. So now I can just go, uh, I will allow uh, permit all access. So now I can just go there and browse for the folder that I need. OCS documents, OST, estimate and here is my general conditions template okay so that is uh, everything for this video i hope that you uh, can follow these steps and use the general conditions template from your h drive directly <laughs>